So we're going to put our feet onto the wall. And when we do this, we want to lie down, checking that the kneecaps are pointing up, coming all the way down, see if we can have the hip bones be level, lengthen the spine, and then just kind of lying something like that. Okay. You can turn the palms upwards so that you can relax the, the arms a little bit. And then feel like the three points of the feet are working towards the wall, even if we have that little ledge here, so it's not 100% perfect, but we will make do with that. And then just closing the eyes for a moment. And tuning inwards. And if you can tone in Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Activating Ujjayi breathing. Noticing if you're able to have the entire rib cage moving with the breath. So with each inhale, you feel the ribs moving side to side, forward and back, up and down. Green, bring your big toes a little closer together. Yeah, good. And then you're going to put your fingertips right between the two front hip bones where Uddiyana Bandha resides. So like something like this. Gonna exhale fully, squeezing the pelvic floor, squeezing underneath those fingertips. And then inhale, try to breathe into the rib cage, but under the fingertips, that tries to remain still. So exhale fully, squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze Uddiyana Bandha under the fingertips. And then when you inhale, inhale to the rib cage, the solar plexus, but right under those fingertips, you're trying to keep that still. Take your block, so this medium block, and hold it between the palms so that the arms are perpendicular to the floor. And squeeze the baby side of the hand a little more firmly than the thumb side. Have a look at your elbows. See that they're straight, but they're not hyperextended or locked. And then feel the baby fingers rising up towards the ceiling, but soften the thumbs down towards the face. So you find this completely neutral position. So we allow our shoulder blades to move, but at the same time, the thumbs come down to soften the neck. And then with the next inhale, we're gonna inhale, reach the arms towards the floor over the head, but don't let the block touch the floor. And as you're doing this, pay attention to what's happening in the core of the body, the belly. See if the low front ribs are poking up or if you can keep them connected. Remember where you were keeping the steadiness under the fingertips, Uddiyana Bandha. See if you can keep that steadiness there. 
Exhale, arms come perpendicular to the floor. Inhale, reaching up and away. It's pausing here. Press the outer hands a little more firmly than the thumb side. Pay attention what's happening in the low back ribs. Are you able to rise them up towards the head? A little bit towards the floor, even if they're not necessarily glued down to the floor. See what's happening in the back of the neck. If there's too much tension in the back of the neck, maybe you need to press the baby fingers a little firmly, more firmly, and maybe you need to bring the thumbs towards you a little bit. Exhale, arms perpendicular. Okay, so now we're going to move with our breathing. Inhale, reaching up and away. Exhale, bring the arms back. Inhale, up and away. Exhale. Notice what's happening with the breath. Continuing, inhale to lift the arms over the head. Exhale, back. Notice if the three points of the feet are still able to be on the same plane. Notice if you can keep the hands equal distance from the floor. Sometimes what will happen is one hand moves a little quicker than the other hand. And on the next exhale, just put the block down beside you. Bend the right knee towards yourself. Interlace the fingers over the shin and just gently bringing the knee towards you. Notice if you're able to relax the skin of the neck, so the sides of the neck sliding down towards the floor. And releasing that leg, bending the left knee towards you, pulling the knee towards you, trying to keep the two sitting bones neutral. So don't let that left sitting bone ride up so that we shorten the left side of the body. And then straightening the knee and bringing the two knees towards you. And stretching the arms over the head. You're going to roll to one side. And we're going to come on to the belly. Okay, so we're starting with sphinx arms. So sphinx arms is when the two um, forearms are parallel. And then we're going to wiggle close to the wall. So our toes can be tucked under. But as we wiggle closer, our heels are working towards the wall as we're, we're we've got that little gap. So just make sure that the ball of the big toe and the ball of the little toe is on the wall. If you guys don't have this big gap that we have here, then maybe your heels touch the wall. Okay, so the two forearms parallel, pressing the heels away. So you feel your kneecaps rising up. So your legs are not touching the floor. And then once again, bring your awareness to that area right between the two front hip bones and see if this can be pulled inside. Away from the floor. And then kind of soften your shoulders. 
So your ears are towards, the shoulders go towards the ears. And then pull with your forearms. So you slide the chest forward and then roll open the shoulders and feel like the sternum is lifting forward and upwards. And the chin, you're trying to have a little more neutral. Now, if anybody has any pinching in the lower back, you don't want to feel pinching. So then you just walk your hands forward until there's absolutely no pinching in the lower back. Feel like your shoulder blades are going to come through the front of the body. Try to find a neutral chin. Pressing the centers of the heels away. Feel the upper inner thighs sliding up into the pelvic floor and up towards the ceiling. Okay, lower down. Just take a little break and shake out the pelvis. And then we're going to come back up into that position. So I, I didn't mention that, but you can have your toes together or the toes apart. If the toes are apart, it's a little less tense, difficult on the lower back. Okay. So toes tucked under, press the heels, forearms parallel, roll open the shoulders, slide the chest forward forward and have that sensation like the shoulder blades are coming through the front body knees off the floor feel the back of the neck lengthening and then pull with the forearms see if you can make your waist a little bit longer and then put the low front ribs on the floor and we're going to slide our elbows to the sides and find w arms Press the centers of the heels away. Feel the quadriceps rising up, connecting into the hip bones, which then connect towards the navel. Elbows press down, hands press up, feeling the shoulder blade action. But the back of the neck, we're looking for no wrinkles behind the back of the neck. So more of a neutral chin. And then relax the root of the tongue. Concentrate on the breathing, wrap the two front hip bones, trying to lift Uddiyana Bandha away from the floor. And then relax, shake that out. And we're going to do that again. So tuck the toes, press the heels, starting in our sphinx, pull with the forearms, lengthen the waist, knees off the floor, connect the upper thighs towards the hip bones, towards the navel, make that hollow between the two hip bones, put the low ribs onto the floor. And this time we're going to interlace our fingers behind the back and reach our fingertips away. Interlace the fingers behind like this. Yeah, lovely. Feel the back of the neck is neutral. So chin neutral, so there's no wrinkles behind the neck. And then we're gonna take our hands behind our head, something like this, and you're gonna press your fingertips down into your head, but your head is gonna press up. Keep pressing the heels away. Wrap the two front hip bones. So you want it, we're trying to get the neck to work a little bit, but just enough where there's not a sense of tension. Interlace the fingers, but change the way you've interlaced at them. So do the more awkward version and reach away. Press the heels away. Upper inner thigh slide up towards the ceiling. 
Bring the fingertips right behind the head. Press into the fingertips. The head resists. And then releasing. And shake that out. <laughs> Bring the hands forward, and we're gonna press into a puppy pose. So pressing back, keep the toes tucked under, lengthen the spine, lengthen the arms, sitting bones working their way towards the heels, back nice and long to counter the back bend. And then point the toes and coming up to sit. And you're going to take your blanket and we're going to put the blanket on the floor because we're putting our knees on the floor. So sometimes it's a little more comfortable. No wrinkles in the blanket. And we're gonna to have to experiment to see how far from the wall we need to be. What we're gonna end up doing is trying to put one foot on the wall. So the knees a little bit behind the hips and then the hands, wrists under the shoulders. So just experiment, maybe you need to come a little more forward, a little bit more back, but your knees, you want your knees on the blanket. If you have some difficulties in your wrists, you could also use the blanket by putting the base of the hands on the blanket. So you might need to have a longer or wider blanket. So that would look, you know, something like, like this. Okay, if that's an issue with your wrists. If you have no issue with the wrist, then don't worry about that. Okay, so now we're starting from hands and knees. So both knees on the floor. And let's just warm up the spine a little more. Inhale, open the chest, drop the belly, lift the tailbone. Exhale, squeeze the front body, rounding the back all the way to the ceiling. Inhale to open the chest. Exhale, tuck the chin, squeezing the front body, Rounding. Inhale to open. Exhale, round. One more like that. Inhaling. Exhaling. And now we're going to try to find neutral. So looking for the shoulders over the wrists. The knees just a little bit behind the hips. Press the fingertips into the floor and feel like the tops of the thighs are going towards the wall. The sitting bones are going towards the wall. The sternum and the top of the head are going forward. So it's almost like we're trying to make space between the vertebrae, looking for neutral curves. So a neutral lumbar spine, a neutral cervical spine. So we need to find Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha to do this. So feel the pelvic floor engaging, wrap the two front hip bones, feel the lower belly reaching away from the floor. And then you're gonna pick up your right leg, flex the foot and then look Mine, I went too far away from the wall now. <laughs> you want your heel on the wall and then have a look down your body. See that the pelvis is level. Okay, so that both sides of the pelvis are the same height. The kneecap is pointing straight down. Once you find that, bring the head back in line with the spine. Squeeze the fingertips, press slightly into the hands, reaching the chest away from the floor and press the center of your right heel firmly into the wall. Pull your toes off the wall. 
Feel that wrapping in the front body. So yeah, online, try to wrap here and pull this in. Really emphasize press in the heel. Make sure the elbows are straight, but not locked. Okay, lowering the foot, and we're gonna do the second side. So lifting the foot, placing it on the wall. First, we use our gaze, we look, check the, the pelvis is neutral, and then bring the head in line with the spine. Squeeze the fingertips, try to make a little hollow in the center of the palm. Keep the carpal tunnel lifting. Elbows straight, but not locked. Neck in line with the spine. And then emphasize pressing the center of the heel away. Pull the toes off the wall. Back of the neck long. I think Fabian, I think your right hip has to come closer to the wall. You're, yeah, okay, there. Yeah, you fixed it. Yeah. And uh, Rebecca, you need to lift your head away from the floor a little bit. Fill in the space between the shoulder blades. Okay, lowering down. Let's just take a little break here into a kind of wide knee child's pose. And then coming back up onto the hands and the knees. We're going to do the first side again. So right heel on the wall. Check your alignment. Squeeze the fingertips. Have a look at your pelvis. Press into the hands. Feel the chest working away from the floor. And now you're going to stretch your left arm forward. Notice what's happening in the core. If it wants to sink, press the right heel firmly away. Pull the right toes off the wall. And then switching, left hand down, right, left leg up. Press the heel, first find your alignment here. Press the heel away, pull the toes off the wall. And when you're ready, stretching the opposite side. And release the hand. Point the toes and pulling back into a child's pose. Coming back onto the hands and the knees. This time you're going to walk a little further forward so you won't be able to touch the wall. Okay, so we're going to see if we can find that same alignment without the wall to, to help us. So tuck the toes, knees a little bit behind the hips, firm in the front body, feel the sitting bones in one direction, crown, sternum in the opposite direction, and then straighten your right knee, pull your leg off the floor, have a look at your pelvis. Have a look at your kneecap. Is it pointing down? Is the pelvis neutral? And then bring the head in line with the spine. We're going to do something a little different too. So you're going to keep your pelvis exactly as it is, but find external rotation in the hip joint. So your knee and your toes will point to the side, but your hip bone will still stay pointing downwards. So we're trying to work a little differently with the buttock muscles.
And then you're going to slide that right leg to the side. So your foot is off the floor. The outer side is off the floor. The inside is on the floor. So your foot is flexed. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing there. Okay, so the foot is flexed. And then have a look at the pelvis because often that whole right side comes with it. But we're going to see if we can keep our pelvis level. Noticing where we feel we are in space. So we're working more on the adductors, these inner line muscles, rather than crunching our spine or just changing our pelvis. And then slide that right foot back. And we're gonna do the second side. So lift the left leg, have a look, kneecap pointing down, hips level, toes down, pelvis level, shoulders level, squeeze the fingertips, press into the floor, elbows straight but not locked, neck in line with the spine. And now keeping the pelvis, everything stays the same except for we externally rotate at the hip joint. So only the leg will turn out. And then slide that left leg to the side. So the foot, the outer foot is off the floor. Usually when we do this, it'll throw off the pelvis. So have a look and bring the pelvis back to neutral with the floor. So this way we don't avoid the stretching. And then bring the leg back, point the toes, open the knees, sliding back into our wide knee child's pose. And coming to sit up, staying on your blanket. You can have your toes off the blanket, knees on the blanket, and then coming and sitting back onto the heels. Okay, we're going to bring our right arm in front of us like an L shape. Left arm over the right arm, intertwining the arms. We're looking for that eagle arm shape. If that doesn't work for you, you could also put the backs of the hands together and squeeze something like that, even if the elbows don't cross one another. Okay, so you see what's working for you. What we're looking for is kind of a stretching in the upper back here. Okay, then we're gonna tone in the core. Keep the core toned in and then lift the elbows up and press the hands away. And then you can experiment. You see if lifting higher is better or lower, bringing the hands towards you or away from you. Find that exact right place where you get the stretch where you want the stretch. And then just close the eyes for a moment and breathe here. Stretching the upper back and then pay attention to the jaw. What's happening in the jaw? Let the lower jaw release. What's happening with the root of the tongue? Relax the root of the tongue. And so usually when the root of the tongue releases, then the tip of the tongue comes kind of around the tops of the teeth, like the a little bit on the palate, somewhere in that area. And this helps us breathe more through the nose so as the air passes through the nose, it won't come out through the mouth. So the tongue is blocking it. And then release the arms. Can roll the shoulders in one direction. And then we're gonna bring our left arm in front, right arm over, intertwining those forearms. Check that the core is still level. 
Pick up the elbows, press the hands away, experiment, lowering, pressing the hands, pulling the hands. Find that place you're going to hold. Once you find that, again, relax the neck, neck muscle, the jaw, the tongue, and also relax around the eyes, behind the eyes, behind the forehead. And releasing the arms, turn the shoulders in the opposite direction, it's the less natural way. And then you're going to interlace your fingers behind the head, tuck the chin, and kind of roll like you're going to curl forward, making your spine nice and round, putting the head towards the knees, and bring the arms over the head. And coming back down, sitting bones down, arms down, change the crossing of the fingers. Chin tucks, round the back, lift the hips a little bit, let the arms go over the head. And releasing, coming back up to the sitting position, lean forward, tuck the toes under, and we're going to come into a squatting position. You can remove your blanket. Bring the fingertips forward and reaching forward. And slowly we're going to lift the buttocks, take the elbows, keep the knees bent, and slide the forearms towards the floor. Let the head drop. The ears can come towards, I mean, the shoulders can come towards the ears. Don't worry about that. Change the crossing of the arms. So have a look. If your right arm is on top, put that behind and switch. And then come back down, slide the forearms. So we're looking to stretch around the shoulder blades. Release the arms, interlace the fingers behind the back. Let the arms drop. Now we want to stretch out the, the lats. So there's big, wide back muscles. So we're going to inhale, lift the chest away from the floor, and then straighten the left knee and lift the left side further away from the floor. So I hope that makes sense. And then bend both knees, come back to the center, straighten the right knee and lift the right side further away from the floor. So we're getting a nice stretch through the right side. Come back to the center, bending both knees. Lift the left side, straighten the left knee. Lift the left side. Come back to the center, relax there. Straighten the right knee. Lift the right side away from the floor. Come back to the center, change the crossing of your fingers. Lift the left side, straighten your left knee, right knee bent. Back to the center, 
Right leg straightens, right side lifts away from the floor. So you're kind of doing an angle. So your right shoulder goes higher than the left shoulder. And then back to the center, left side. Back to the center, right side. Back to the center, release the arms. Let the arms collapse down to the floor, head towards the floor, bending at the knees, relax the back of the neck, squeeze the lower belly, and start to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Okay, now we do standing positions. So we're going to take our chair and put it towards the end of our mat. So once again, so the theme is I'm working on the buttocks and the hamstrings. <laughs> and I thought about that before you came. Maybe I should have stretched it instead of worked them. But uh, working is always good too. Um, and we're going to use the wall. So we have to experiment and see like when we tilt forward, if I can put my foot on the wall where my leg is about parallel with the floor, so I'm making a right angle, and both my hips are still over the, the left ankle. And then the fingertips can kind of come forward, and you can have a look, see what's happening with the pelvis. See where the kneecaps are pointing. And then from here, lift the head and kind of drag the fingertips. You pull the fingertips back without them moving. So you might need to change where your chair is. Okay, so everybody go into that. I'm going to have a look around and see what's going on. So um, I think, Corinne, you need to straighten your knee a little more and pull, like try to pull the core a little bit away from the floor. Maybe your chair is too close to you, actually. Yeah, so if you put the chair a little further away, you can get that sensation like you're pulling the hands. Put your toes down, get out there. Okay, right foot comes down, left leg lifts up. Press the three points of the foot into the wall, drag the fingertips back, feel the core engaging. Drag the fingertips. Um, Fabian, try to engage your quadricep a little more. Your upper quadricep, press the heel towards the wall. Okay, and then releasing, coming out. So we're going to switch the direction. So you don't want your foot necessarily to just, well, if you need to, you can let it stay on the chair. <laughs> but what we're going to work towards is trying to bring our hands on the wall, pressing into the hands, trying to make ourselves more or less a right angle. You know, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. But, you know, for example, I don't want to be like this, right? I'm trying to activate the front of my body, press into the wall, and then bringing the right toes onto the chair. Okay, and so starting like this, bring the ears between the upper, the upper arms, have a look at your kneecap, see if your kneecap is pointing straight down, toes tucked under, yeah, so just take your time, find that right place. It does sometimes take a few tries. Bring the hands a little closer, Adelphi. Yeah, good. 
So just the toes are on the floor for the, on the chair for the moment. Wrap that right hip down, this whole side. Okay, now see if you can pick up that right foot. So the right foot comes off the chair, pressing the foot and pressing the hands into the wall. Have a look, your kneecap is still pointing straight down. Core is engaged and then bring the neck so the ears are between the upper arms. Now we're not gonna change anything except we're going to externally rotate that right leg. So the hip doesn't move with it. We're trying to use these little external rotators in the, the butt. We're trying to use the outer hamstring. We're trying to use the glutes. And then releasing and coming up. Do you feel it? Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> Good. Just make sure it's working. <laughs> okay. So we get to do a second side. So finding ourselves parallel with the floor to the first start, check. You know, it's hard to see. Try to find your hips over the ankles, tone in the front body. Once you find that, bend the left knee and then lift the foot and just have the toes tucked under. And maybe you notice one side's stronger or weaker than the other. Paying attention to what's happening in the core. Press the palms of the hands into the wall. Press the heel away. Fabienne, if you can, try to bring your torso a little lower and your hands a little lower. And now try to pick up the leg. See that the kneecap still points straight down, the hips still pointing straight down. Now trying to find that external rotation. And releasing, coming up, shaking out the legs. Okay, so we're going to face our chair, finding our samastidihi. Bend the right knee and place the foot on the chair. Take your right hand on the top of the right thigh, press the right thigh down, extend the left arm up towards the ceiling. So we're going down and lifting that left hip up, pulling in the bandhas. Now you're gonna straighten your right leg, press the heel into the chair. We can flex our foot for now. And then the right thigh presses down. So we're, the top of the thigh presses down, the heel presses down, but the tibia, the top of the tibia presses up. Okay, so we're looking for, there's some engagement around the buttocks. The knee is straight, but not locked. Okay, if you can maintain that, then lift the right arm up. Both fingertips trying to reach up towards the ceiling like what we did when we were lying down, right? Baby fingers up, thumbs down, so that you feel like you're extending the shoulder blade area, but also releasing the neck area. And release the arms, and we'll do the other side. So left leg on the chair, having a look, your hips directly over your ankle, the hips, whoops. <laughs> oh yeah, I started with a bent knee, hips level. Press your left thigh down, lift your right thigh up, extend your right arm up. So we're thinking that the right side is like a pillar right? We're nice and strong. Left thigh really pressing down. While you press that down, you, usually you'll feel the bandhas activate. And then straighten the leg, press the heel down, 
flex the foot and keep pressing the top of that thigh down, but the knee, the top of the tibia just below the knee presses up so that we don't lock our knee. Okay, when you can maintain all this, lift the second arm. And exhale, release, and release the leg. And we're going to turn the chair, and we're going to sit on our chair. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Don't get too excited too quickly. <laughs> Keep your block close by. So we're going to separate the feet. It's kind of like a samastidhi or more like a tadasana. Knees over the ankles. And see if you can feel your inner arches rising up and coming and attaching to the inner lines of the legs. And then have a look at your pelvis. So you want to, if you put your hand on your sacrum like this, you want to feel like the top of the sacrum goes forward, but just slightly, right? We're not trying to do a back bend, but if you notice that sometimes, like usually when we sit, the top of the sacrum goes backwards. So we're not trying to completely do the opposite of that. It becomes a little more straight because you need that to keep space in the front of the hips, but you don't want it to go back, okay? So see if you can feel that with your pelvis, and then take your cup-shaped hands, and you're gonna try to lift your low back ribs up. And notice when I'm doing that, see how my shoulders curl forward? And then that gives that sense of the front ribs connecting towards the, the hips. So let the shoulders curl, curl forward, it's no problem, just to find that lift in the low back ribs because usually what people are doing is they're lifting, they think they're lifting their low back ribs because they're pushing them. But what's happening is actually they're crunching their lower back and they're lifting the front ribs. So this is why I do this exaggeration like that, which everybody thinks looks weird. But if you feel it, then you're gonna notice the difference. The low back ribs are rising up, the front of the core, tones in. And then you're going to take your thumbs under the armpits. Nothing's going to change except for you're going to lift the armpits and lift the sternum. So now I'm no longer curled, right? So we can find that curling without uh, damaging ourselves. We get so locked into this in yoga, right? Oh, I'm all curled forward. So then we do the opposite. But sometimes we want to be able to be mobile in all directions, in fact. So we should be able to curl our spine, okay? Then you're going to take your thumbs in your ears. And then you're going to lift your ears up and where the middle fingers are going to come and come towards each other. And so this point is the top of the head, right? Where the two middle fingers come together and you wanna lift your ears, feel the neck elongating and then feel that point rising up. But just enough, because we can always overdo even simple actions like this, where we start to crunch our jaw. So we don't want to crunch the jaw. So relax the root of the tongue, feel the jaw is released, and then you're going to hold the side of your block and straighten the arms parallel with the floor. Press the baby fingers are more, more firmly than the thumb side. Have a look at your elbows. Like for me, I'm always locking my elbows. And for years, I didn't understand why I didn't feel my triceps. I was like, I don't feel, I do this. And there's like no tricep action. And all it was is because I was locking my elbows. So I didn't have to use my muscles. So if I feel like I'm going to bend my elbows and straighten them at the same time, then I realize I do have triceps, <laughs> okay? Baby fingers forward, thumbs slightly towards you. Inhale, start to lift the arms. And then, of course, in my youth and my youthful ego, 
I just thought it was because I was strong. <laughs> like, no, it's because you're using your joints. <laughs> Exhale, arms down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, down. See how much you can release the face. Inhale, up. Exhale. Let's do one more. Inhale. Exhale. Let's bring the block right between the thighs, the mid thighs. And so that we're going to help, it's going to help us keep our legs in order. And we're going to bring our right arm in front of us, left arm over, intertwining the forearms. So once again, so the focus, if you haven't noticed, is on the external rotation and buttocks and also on the neck and shoulders. So lift the elbows, press the hands away, and then notice if you can still relax the jaw, relax around the eyes, relax the skin of the neck. And then tuck the chin and feel like you're gonna curl from the top. So all the cervical vertebrae curve, the thoracic vertebrae curve, let the elbows come down. The lumbar vertebrae curve, like you're going to make yourself as small as possible. And inhale, coming up, releasing the arms, left arm forward, right arm over, intertwining, tuning into any tension in the face. Tucking the chin, curling slowly. Feel like you can isolate the curls from the top to the middle to the bottom. And coming up. Releasing the arms, you're going to place the hands on your chair, press into your chair, use the arms to help elongate the spine, and then we're going to flex our feet and straighten our legs so the feet are a little bit apart. And we're going to press the heels down, tibia, top of the tibias up, press into our chair and see if we can inhale, pick up the pelvis. And then notice the belly wants to do all the work, right? If you see, I can press my belly up. I don't want that. I want the belly pulling in. So this way we're using more of our abdominal muscles. And then feel like your block, you're going to slide. It's like your block is going to slide down towards the floor like that. But you're using your thigh muscles. And lowering down, removing the block. And we're going to come into some more restful poses. And what I was hoping to do was something with this curved block. So if you guys don't have the curved block, you can use a normal block. But then it's better you have two. Okay, so two of the normal blocks. And I'll, I'll show you. So we move the chair up. Or actually, let's put the chair close to the wall. Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so when we're using blocks, I do, and I never taught it like that for a long time till I learned a little bit more about fascia. So if you see my old videos or even in the book and stuff, I don't show this, but I think it's quite interesting to put a, a blanket on the blocks because then this way that unless you like it's interesting to press really hard into our muscle and fascia if there's trigger points 
right? If you've got, oh, it's just so tight, then maybe you need to work really hard. But if you don't have any pain, then when you press really hard, it gives you pain, right? I don't know if you've noticed that. Like if you go for a massage when everything feels good, then you come out feeling all sore. But if you go feeling like you have really tight muscles, you come out and you feel good, right? I don't know. That's my, my experience. Okay, so we're going to use the block to, um, I was hoping to work on our upper back and cervical curves, right? So if you don't have the round blocks, you won't really be able to work on your cervical curve. So just use the block kind of between the shoulder blades, something like that. And then you should take another block and put it under the head. And if there's any pain in the lower back, you also put another block under the pelvis. For you guys who have your curved blocks, then I was thinking to work a little higher than what I've done in other classes, because we tend to lose our cervical curve from our habitual movements. So I was hoping to work on making our cervical curve. So you can see if I'm doing it like this, I'm much higher, right? And then you experiment, like you could even put the block, um, mine's not gonna go lower than that, like this. And then if you wanna work on your pectoralis muscles, then you stretch your arms out to the side, something like that. Okay, so for you guys online, the block will be a little lower, but really the premise is the same. So the block will be between the shoulder blades and then under the head, so something like that. Okay, I'm going to look around and I'll see if we need to change anything. If you have pain, then you have to tell me. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, you've got a curve. That looks good. Yeah, I'm trying to make a cervical curve. Like we're trying to work on the cervical curve without hanging the head. Maybe you're a little too high on that. Yeah, maybe maybe it's sh shift up this way. Yeah, but just a little bit. Oh, that was different. And that's still put the block. Oops, wait, I don't want to pull your hair. <laughs> Let's see, does that work? Yeah. Does that feel okay? Online, let's see. So it's, it's up to you, Corrine, but you could maybe, could be interesting to put, um, maybe try to switch that, put the block where you have that thing. And yeah, yeah. Maybe put it, yeah, the other way. Um, yeah, and then put a blanket on it. Unless you have pain between your shoulder blades right now, but yeah. Because I'm, it's a little different than what I've done before. You know, before I'm trying to keep the neck more neutral, but right now we're looking for a little curve as long as it's not hurting and as long as you're, yeah, that looks, yeah, that looks better. Now your chest is higher. Yeah, that looks good, Green. And so when we're in this kind of position, if you feel any pinching across the shoulders, you could put your arms in internal rotation. Okay, so you decide if you really want to open more, you can open them to the side and you could even bend the elbows so the hands go a little bit upwards uh, towards the direction of cactus pose, but not as extreme as that. Okay, and this can help release the neck muscles, release across the chest. You can let go of the bandhas. You can let go of ujjayi breathing. Still make sure you're breathing smoothly and evenly, but with less of a powerful breath.
And then when we're coming out, we're gonna interlace our fingers behind the neck or the head. And first lift with our hands so our chin comes up with the support of our hands. And then rolling off your blocks and coming to one side. And then we're going to shift closer to our chair. And we're going to put our legs on the chair. And so this will be the final relaxation. So um, you can cover yourself with a blanket, cover the eyes. And your choice, you could put your arms in cactus arms or bring the hands on the, the belly. You know, find the position that feels the best for you. And if you need help, just let me know. And so from here, we're going to do a body scan. So we want to bring our attention to each part of the body. And as we feel a part of the body, we want to ask it to release and relax. Feeling the toes, the feet, the tops of the feet, the soles of the feet, and letting them relax. Feeling the ankles, Relaxing the ankles. Feeling the shins and the calves. Relaxing the shins and the calves. Relaxing around the knees. Relaxing the thighs, the fronts of the thighs, the backs of the thighs, the inner thighs. Relaxing the hip sockets, allowing the femur bones to feel heavy into the hip sockets. Relaxing the pelvis, all around the pelvis, the lower belly, the buttocks, the internal organs, relaxing all around the waist, the lumbar spine, the sides of the waist, around the navel, and inside the internal organs, inside the waist. And relaxing the low back ribs, the middle back ribs, the upper back ribs, all around the shoulder blades, then relaxing the front low ribs and that soft part between the front ribs solar plexus, 
Relaxing the middle front ribs. The upper front ribs, the chest, the pecs, cross the collarbones. Relaxing the tops of the shoulders, allowing the skin to slide towards the floor. Relaxing the top of the arms. Again, allowing the skin to slide down towards the floor. Relaxing the biceps, the triceps. Around the elbows. Relaxing the forearms, the wrists, and the hands. Softening the palms, the backs of the hands, all the fingers and the thumbs. And bringing the awareness to the neck. Relaxing the back of the neck up towards the skull. Relaxing the sides of the neck up towards the ears. Relaxing the fronts of the neck up towards the throat and the jaw. Relaxing around the mouth, the cheeks, around the eyes, the forehead, and the skin on the skull. Relaxing the mind. And slowly bringing awareness back to the body. Taking a couple of deep breaths. Stretching the arms. And bringing the legs towards you. Rolling to one side. Eventually coming up to a sitting position. We'll bring the hands in front of the heart center. And 
imagine that you're being wrapped in peace. Like you have this very light, gauzy material protecting you, lightly holding you in a sense of peace. And imagine that you're wrapping those close to you in that same peace. Maybe you can wrap anybody that you're having some difficulties with in that peace. We'll chant Om Shanti. Om Shanti 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 Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so this weekend, Yvonne's giving a special class um, that is doing some softer yoga asanas to lead everybody into a sense of meditation. Maybe I'll take it if I can. Um, and Gerald is coming to Paris uh, in May, and he's doing a three-day workshop. So it'll include, it's going to be like including a little bit of everything from pranayama and kriyas, some asana and some meditation. So we kind of get that full experience of different parts of, yo of the yoga world in one weekend. And it's a long weekend. So if you're not going away, why not spend it doing yoga, right? <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>